there's an equation for putting on muscles and losing fat. Hormones plus training plus diet equals great results. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you doing? You're insane? Never mention the word hormones. This is the world the fitness industry wants you to see. Training programs, get your training programs in. Lots of methods to do, try one today. Combine that with diets, fresh diets, get your diets in. Oh, please help me to watch your crime when the man with the diets passes you by. Ever wondered why there are so many? Could it be to confuse and distract? Are they all variations on a theme? Or is there an important lesson to be learned from this smorgasbord? Now, rather than the business savvy just capitalising on this growth industry, no pun intended, in either scenario, or people just scribbling down any old nonsense to sell a book, the range of training represents the evolution of our bodies to do so many different and disparate tasks. And all the diet options out there reflect our omnivorous tendencies. Basically, we're like rats and seagulls. We can live and survive on just about anything. But diets also reflect the health statuses and different anthropological influences in our biology. Basically, we're all on a sliding scale of sickness, and our ancestors lived on different foods, depending on geography, and so we all handle different foods differently. Case in point, fast, processed, chemical-laden foods been around for about 70 years, but people handle that differently. Some people function fine and perform great, whereas others get themselves into a pickle. So what makes a fat loss diet work? Well, the simplistic answer is anything that reduces caloric intake. For weight loss, eat less than you burn, then you owe calories to your body. The body pays the debt by breaking down fat stores, which is like a savings account. This is simple. It's massively oversimplified. It's like saying everyone loves a spectacle, so any film with lots of special effects in it will be great. No, Michael Bay, no. You see, the body has a number of different fuel stores, or bank accounts. You have a fat bank, but you also have a sugar bank and a protein bank. And you've got a biological choice which bank you go and get your money from. For some, it's just really easy to make withdrawals from sugar. And others find that beep, 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 protein bank ATM just so convenient. And there are some that find that their fat bank gives them one of those chip and pin cards to make that spending just effortless. If you're blessed or supplementing your hormones, Oi! Say the H word. Then your protein account gets an overdraft facility. You can basically keep your gains even if you're running low on fuel. And most find that with exercise, their carbs are put into a high interest, short-term savings account for the next time they work out. But for a lot of people, that fat is locked in a vault and you need a Mission Impossible team to get to it. Now all of these scenarios are due to varying hormonal and enzymatic levels. <coughs> Diet exercise. Now all of these scenarios are due to varying hormonal and enzymatic levels. La 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 la, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. YouTube is great. It's allowed us to see a variety of different people eating and training that we wouldn't have seen 10 years ago. And this is what becomes apparent. There's no magical methods when it comes to training and there's no secret sauce when it comes to food. Aesthetic athletes train and eat at very obtainable levels. Their strength levels are good, but they're not amazing. And their diets are good, but they're not exceptional. But there are loads of guys and girls out there lifting similar weights, eating similar food, but don't look like that. In my Hit V Lit video, I said that the biggest differentiating factor between the elite and the non-elite was performance level. Basically, you won't look like that unless you perform like that. It's not the training method, it's the performance level. In aesthetics, the biggest differentiating factor between people of similar performance levels is their personal biology. Basically, you won't look like that unless your hormones perform like that. And instinctively, we know it. We just call it drugs. And there is a logic to the thinking. Hormones are the naturally occurring drugs of our body. When someone's super happy, what do we say? Whew, I want some of what they're on. 
But what the fitness industry won't tell you is that your own hormonal levels have the greatest impact on your muscle building and your fat burning capacity. Not your workout or your diet. The fitness industry is like a boss in a job that tells you, turn up on time, work hard here, and you'll be successful. If your hormones aren't at the higher level, then all the hard work and dieting in the world won't swap your janitizing for privatizing. Because no one in the history of work went from cleaner to CEO. I know this isn't the normal fitness message, but I want to tackle the topic of nutrition, and I think that this is foundational to that, so I hope it helps. And just a quick thing, thank you for all the private messages you've sent me. When I was reading them, the alarm went off on the phone, and then it crashed, and when I rebooted it, I'd lost all the messages, and so I'm really, really sorry. If you've sent me a message and I've not replied, then I'd be grateful if you could send it to me again, because I want to reply to everybody who's taken the time to write to me. In the meantime, hit the thumbs up, and if you like my vibe, please subscribe. Oh, oh. La 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 la